one. Welcome back, fans. We're here for yet another episode of the Shooting the Shit podcast live on Combat Press and Loudmouth MMA Network, uh, as well as all the other platforms that simulcast the show. As usual, I am your host, Riley Contact, with another great guest this week. Uh, before we introduce her, obviously, if you're in the greater Illinois area, check out our sponsor. Uh, go to Facebook.com and check out Cornelius & Sons for all of your home reconstruction and remodeling needs. Again, that is Cornelius & Sons on Facebook.com for the greater Illinois area. All right, uh, we have um, another great guest on the show this week. She's fought at strawweight. She's fought or is fighting and has fought at atomweight. Uh, Kayla Rocco. Kayla, how are you doing today? I am doing great, man. Living my best life. I can't complain. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Kayla, awesome to have you on the show. Uh, now, you, you have just signed a contract. We're going to talk about that very shortly. Um, but you were previously with Icon Fighting Federation. I believe you mm -hmm. fought three times under the banner there. Your most recent fight, you took on Emily King. Uh, unfortunately for you, you walked away with the loss. So, um, kind of a two-parter here. Could you kind of just break down that fight and, and, and what happened there? And then, um, you know, after that, what were some lessons you took away from that fight? For sure. I'm actually glad you're asking this question because it's been a little while since I – thought about the fight and really kind of broke it down in my head so um man tough fight tough girl um it, it's hard to kind of say what went down in that fight I I did kind of feel like I wasn't really myself um just to kind of disclose everything I and, and this is no excuse but my entire camp was actually done not in the gym I was dealing with a pretty bad infection that was on my face so I literally could not train in at ATT at all. So I had no sparring, no grappling. Um, man, it was a really, really tough time. Like I wanted the fight so bad. And, you know, in no instance do I want to back down from a fight if I'm healthy, you know. So all of camp, I was really focusing on my cardio. I was like running the fastest three minute miles I could possibly do and and lifting and putting myself through like hard MMA circuits. So I was in amazing shape, but I think, you know, the problem that really showed throughout the fight was I kind of looked like, I don't want to say wasn't ready to be in there, but I, I kind of looked like I hadn't been sparring, you know, like I didn't have that, that uh, tough sparring out outside of the fight and, and it showed, um, but that's no excuse. I feel like, to be honest, I think I won the fight. Um, you know, it was close, and I, I definitely could have done a lot more to show that. But I, I do think I won the fight. Um, overall, I think her the fact that she was southpaw and had size on me, I think, was a little bit frustrating for me to deal with throughout the fight. Um, you know, southpaws can be awkward, especially when they kick a lot. You know, that that's like, so it that's how it felt, man. It, it, it just felt a little awkward for me. Um, I was having trouble just kind of landing my punches. And I think a little bit too much. I was focusing on moving um, rather than just kind of standing my ground and, and throwing my hands, which is typically what I do very well. So, yeah, man, I just didn't feel like myself in there. I feel like I could have been a little bit more of the aggressor like I said kind of sat down on my punches and sorry I just got a phone call are you still there yeah I'm here <laughs> um, um so yeah I think I think probably the biggest mistake I made was like man I can hurt this girl you know she's not doing anything to hurt me and I think I should have walked forward a little bit more and and sat down on my punches and been the aggressor um I really think I made the mistake of like I said, trying to move too much and kind of place my shots where it looked like she was dictating the fight. And I think that's really what the judges saw. Yeah, fair enough assessment. Uh, I, I do remember the fight. And I, yeah, it was a very, very close fight. Um, mm -hmm. And it definitely could have gone either way. Now, one thing you mentioned that I kind of thought of um, is in, in preparation of the fight, you said you did a lot of weight training. Fighting as low as you do, is there any concern that adding the muscle is going to really affect either the weight cut or your ability to actually fight at that weight class? Well, again, being completely honest, um, 
I didn't cut weight for that fight. I was walking around at 117 pounds. Um, I think especially because of all the cardio I was doing, you know, focusing on the cardio and weight training, I was like very cut up and very lean, but so light. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really cut weight. I'm, I'm very, very undersized at straw weight. I actually weighed in at 113 and a half. And I told them just to say 115 because I didn't want to sound that small. Um, again, this is no excuse. I, you know, I have tried to put on size. I think over the years, you know, my body is getting used to the MMA training and I'm just, I'm leaning out and I'm just getting smaller. You know, some people get bigger, but I'm, I'm getting smaller. So um, the good news is I plan to test myself at 105 in the future. I think it's probably a better weight class for me. Um, and, you know, I'll have a little bit of a cut, but I, I think that I'll probably feel more comfortable at 105. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Uh, now, you know, we're going to talk about obviously signing with Combates. Will that be at straw weight or will you be competing at atom weight with them? I think I'm going to do both. Um, you know, just depending on the opportunities they give me, I'm definitely open to doing both. If it's more short notice, you know, I'll, I'll go 115. Um, if I have a little bit of time, definitely 105. But I'd like to compete compete at both, you know, just depending on, on what opportunities come my way. So obviously, you know, you signed with Combate. So how did that come about? And, uh, I, you know, I, I would assume your management was in on it. And, and what are we looking forward to? When can we uh, expect to see you make your debut with them? So, yeah, uh, I'm signed with First Round Management, and they came to me with the idea. I was really excited about it. A little hesitant at first to sign a multi-fight contract just because, you know, as a fighter, it's hard. Like, you don't really – there's no right path. You know, so being locked in a contract with Combate did make me a little nervous. But after speaking to my management, um, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like at this point in my career, I really just need fights. I need experience. I need to keep testing myself in the cage and get in there as much as possible. So I like the fact that Combate is going to keep me busy. Um, they're also doing a lot of shows in Miami coming up, like every weekend, every other weekend. So... I like that too. You know, it's a little bit more local to me and yeah, I just hope to stay busy. And what was the other question you asked? Oh man, I don't even Oh, debut. Yeah. About my debut. Um, I think soon, hopefully August. Yeah. We're looking to book something as soon as possible. So I hope to have some, some news for you guys soon. For sure. And uh, you know, I don't know how Combates, you know, does, uh, the, putting the cards together because I'm even on their media list and they don't usually release the cards so like a week before the fight so yeah. I, I'd be interested to see how much time you have uh, for that fight camp as a you know versus when it's actually announced right yeah I guess we'll see um, I don't know I haven't followed Combate too much in the past but you know I'm hoping since they're gonna have a lot of shows that maybe they'll maybe they'll um you know, let people know a little bit sooner. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Have you spied their roster and, and, and really seen who's mm -hmm. on there to see who you want first? I've looked around um, just to try to get an idea of what the girls look like at 105, 115. Um, I'm excited about it. I feel like Combate is kind of one of those organizations that a lot of people don't, they know about it, but they don't actually, you know, they're not too familiar with the fighters and some of the girls are scrappy, you know, so I think it's just, I feel like every fight I'm going to have with them, it's going to be, it's going to be a show. And I'm looking forward to testing myself with some small scrappy girls. Yeah, there's one fighter on the roster. She just took a strawweight fight and she lost, but she's normally an atom weight. Sarah Kova is really the one I was looking at. Uh, she fights out of Mexico. Um, so okay. when I saw that you had signed, I said, oh, that if, if you know, obviously she, uh, Kayla Rocco is going to 105 and she's going to fight at 105 mm -hmm. with Combates. I thought uh, that matchup makes that matchup makes sense to me, uh, Sarah Kova, and she's a she's a young fighter as well. Okay, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'll say that in Combate, I'll be like, they'll see that. No, no, don't do that. You know. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, one more question. I actually I'd thought of this because um, we're going to talk about Misha Tate momentarily. 
Uh, and obviously you have a presence on social media and we've asked other female fighters who've come on the show and we get kind of mixed answers here. Uh, the sex sells thing in terms of social media, uh, which, what are your thoughts on that? Are you for it, against it, indifferent? Oh, this is such a hard question. Um, I'm kind of neutral, you know? I feel like... <sighs> You know, anything girls can do to kind of market themselves, it, it's hard to be against it because we want to be in the limelight, you know? And, and if it takes being sexy or, or selling sex to do that, then it's like, why wouldn't we use that for our advantage? But at the same time, for me personally, I try to have a balance, you know? Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be respected or known as being hot. You know, and I, to me, like, the most important thing is to be respected as a fighter. And that's where my priority is at. Um, if you look at my social media, you know, you'll you'll see some sort of sexy photos, like in a bathing suit or this and that. But I try to keep it, I try to keep it, um, you know, somewhat classy because, like I said, um, you know, I, I do want to market myself as a person and as a fighter, but my priority is in the gym and so it's important for me to show that too absolutely i mean obviously to each their own uh but yeah. it also does open up some fighters to criticism um yeah. because it shows you know maybe that they're not maybe focusing where their focus should be so there's i mean there's you, i think everybody can see it both ways it's hard man like especially being surrounded by so many of these famous female fighters it, it's tough to listen to the MMA media or the fans because, I mean, this is just an example, Paige. Right. The amount of haters this girl has is absurd. She's obviously gorgeous. She, you know, and, and she markets herself in a way that is pleasing to her fans. And I think she enjoys doing it and has fun doing it. But it's not fair for people to assume that she doesn't work hard right. or that she's serious about her career. Because I can tell you firsthand that's that's not true. She, she works extremely hard, extremely hard. I mean, harder than probably all the fans put together. You know, like she really busts her ass. And when she's in the gym, she's focused. I've sparred with her. You know, I've trained with her. She, you know, so it, it's hard. And but MMA fans, they'll be fans. You know. They really don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've long said that. Uh, you know, some, you know, any fighter, you know polarizing as they may be could cure cancer and there'd still be half yeah. the uh half of the mma fandom would find a problem with it was somehow yeah. so uh it's, yeah. it, they can be toxic for sure yeah um so coming up this weekend we do have a ufc uh fight night card uh, we're going to talk about two of the fights specifically uh we'll talk about the co-main event first uh so you have the return of misha tate who's been away from the cage for a while uh she'll be taking on marion renault so the interesting part of this fight uh, Marion Renault is taking this as her retirement fight. She's actually in her younger 40s, I think 42, 43. And Misha Tate's returning from retirement. So it's kind of an interesting uh, thing there. So I know before we came on, you said you don't know a ton about Renault, but how about you just comment on, on Misha Tate's return and, and what that means to the division? Yeah, I think it's amazing that Misha re is returning. To be honest, it took me by complete surprise. I, I didn't think that she had any intentions on coming back to MMA, but I think it's going to be really, really good for the sport. You know, Misha is obviously one of the, one of the front runners of female MMA. So I think it's going to be really, really cool to add her back to the mix and just following her on social media. Like she looks like she's in amazing shape. Yes. Um, I think she even said herself, like she's in better shape than ever before. And, you know, I think people underestimate, women coming back from after they had a child mm -hmm. like mom strength is very real and and that focus that they have you know like they have a baby cub to care for now like never underestimate a woman who has a child so i'm looking forward to her return and and i think she's gonna come away with the w for sure and that was actually the next question i was gonna say does the childbirth right she might have had two kids if i'm not mistaken um, but uh, does, does that affect her as a fighter? Because the one example that I always remembered was when they had the, the ultimate fighter and Lisa Ellis uh, join the cast after had staying away from the sport due to childbirth, and she just did not mm -hmm. look like the same fighter. 
um, you know, that could have just been, you know, it could have been a number of things, but, you know, mm -hmm. obviously the childbirth being so fresh, uh, you know, from, you know, why she was away from the sport for a little bit, mm -hmm. kind of always made that kind of a curious matter. Does, you know, does that affect a, a fighter after they have a kid? I don't have a child, so I can't speak from experience at all, but I think it just depends. You know, I think it depends on, on the person and their body. I think it depends maybe how much time that they've taken off, you know, are they trying to come back too soon or did they give themselves an opportunity to kind of settle into their new life? Mm -hmm. You know, how much help do they have at home support? So yeah, I think it just depends. Um, my teammate and friend Nina Ansaroff recently had a baby, and, and she came back and fought against Mackenzie Dern. Right. Uh, she looked amazing. I mean, I was training with her in the gym. She was sharp. She did say after the fight, you know, she lost in the in the first round, and mm -hmm. she did say that she felt like she came back too soon, um, that she kind of mentally just wanted to get herself back in there. But, right. you know, maybe her body wasn't necessarily ready, but... I just think it depends on the person. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Misha comes back. Yeah, I was surprised Ansaroff came in, came back as quickly as she did. Mm -hmm. um, so for uh, for the Tate, Renault, uh, you got a prediction for that one? Who wins? Yeah, I'm going to say Misha. Um, like I said, I don't know too much about Renault or her style. I probably should look into that, but... <laughs> I, I, I could tell you, she's more of a grappler. She's a good, okay. she's a good jujitsu uh, practitioner. Um, that pretty decent boxing as well. Um, but obviously okay. Tate being a wrestler with boxing, so that should be an interesting matchup. And obviously, yeah. Renault, uh rides off into the sunset after this one, win, lose, or draw. So, uh, so it sounds like it might be a tough matchup for Misha. You know, if if this is a solid jujitsu girl, um, we'll see. I, I think Mama Misha is gonna. Find a way to win. You for know? sure, and I, and I, for for the record, I also have Misha Tate winning. Um, but no, okay. it should be a really interesting matchup. Now, the main event, um, I believe you said your teammates with Tiago mm -hmm. Moises. He will step into the main event after you know the original main event fell out. He'll be fighting Islam Makashev, who's you know famously runs with Habib Nur Habib mm -hmm. Nurmagomedov and that whole clan there. So um, you know, obviously, if you don't know much about Islam, why don't you just talk about Tiago and and you know what to look for this fight from him you know it's funny when this fight was announced i heard that nobody wanted to fight that guy you said islam yeah that's yep. his name mm -hmm. nobody wanted to fight him and and i saw that tiago stepped up to the plate and was like i'll fight him like what do you mean let, let me fight this guy so i mean that alone just attests to the mental and physical toughness of this guy um i you know i see him in the gym every single day he is in incredible shape he he trains with the best people on the mat you know and, and it's easy to say that but like no he really picks out the best wrestlers the best jujitsu guys and make sure he does his rounds with them and and i think that speaks a lot about a fighter so obviously i'm going to be riding with with tiago on this one yeah, I kind of figured that. I've been knowing that you're his teammate, so <laughs> it's really, really hard to you know go against your teammate. So yeah, it should be a really interesting matchup. Tiago's long been on the radar. You know, he was a top prospect before he came to the UFC, and he's mm -hmm. really delivered on that. And and you're right, nobody wanted to fight Islam Makashev uh, for good reason because he's he's an animal, a different animal as well. Uh, yeah. So you know, obviously, I had to pick against your teammate. Although I think it really has a good chance to 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 be a great fight, and and I think both guys are going to have their moments, and it, it's going to be a fight of the night contender. Just these are these are two different animals getting in the cage yeah. in this fight. Yeah, the good thing about Tiago, he's very well rounded. Mm -hmm. I mean, very solid striking, wrestling, and and jujitsu. Like, so I think you know, regardless of what the outcome is, is it, it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, and it'll be a great experience for Tiago to get into a main event as well. You can't buy that experience. That's that's huge. Yeah, five round fight though that changes things. You know, five yes, rounds. It does. That'll be exciting. Yeah, really looking forward to that main event. So mm -hmm. that will be that that'll be Saturday. Uh, that'll be on ESPN. Actually, that might be on regular ESPN. So not only does he get the main event, he gets the big TV. So yeah. it'll be great as well to get some uh, big spotlight experience. Yeah, he deserves it, for sure. Absolutely. Well, Kayla, we want to thank you for coming on the show. We really were, uh, you know, obviously you're doing us a favor by coming on. Uh, before we let you go, obviously, uh, is there, we'll, we'll give you the floor. You have the time to talk. Uh, where can we find you? Anybody you'd like to thank or shout out, the floor is yours. 
For sure. Um, you guys can follow me. My Instagram and Twitter is KROCKMMA. It's K-A-Y-R-O-C-K-M-M-A. And no specific sponsors or anything. Just want to thank my gym, American Top Team. Best gym in the world. Family, supporters. Love all of you guys. And I really appreciate the love. Um, I hope you guys keep rocking with me through the ups and downs because I'm here for a long time. I'm, there's no quitting me. So I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. And we will definitely keep an eye out for your Combates debut. Definitely interested in that. So, um, well, that's it. So uh, for Kayla Rocco, I'm Riley Contact saying continue watching the fights, continue watching the show, and go fuck yourself.